this decade of reform, and then here we are, and there's people calling for defunding and dismantling this police department that's been going through reforms for 10 years. So I guess I'm just curious what you think the city of Minneapolis is in for. You know, have you found this process with the federal government to be effective, or does it just constantly fall behind what the public expects? So I think first, I, consent decrees as a tool, I think can be very important um, to, to reform a police department. And they were used very effectively during the Obama administration in places like New Orleans and Seattle and New Jersey. Um, and so I think that they can be very effective and, they've, and the consent decree here has had enormous impact. In fact, many of the policies and practices that were developed here are now what are taken to other places and used by national experts as what every department should be doing. I think over the summer, what we saw was most of the consent decree was focused on the use of force in the individual interactions between police officers and businesses or residents while the police officer was doing their patrol duties. Um, there wasn't a lot of focus on crowd control. And I think that's where we still need to focus as a department. So what would your advice be, I guess, then to the city of Minneapolis, having been involved in the consent decree process on both sides of the coin, what would your advice be for that city as they embark on, on that possibility? I think a couple things. One, the city needs to have its own experts so that it can advise it as to really what the best standards are, because every consent decree is a negotiation between the Department of Justice and a city. Um, the Department of Justice has, has not really gone to court to get a consent decree. Um, by litigation, except for in one instance that I'm aware of. And so first that, that negotiation, what are you trying to accomplish? And then you have to be really clear, what can you do on their consent decree? And when do you know you're done? And I think that that's been a frustration with people in our consent decree is that the, the, the when are you finished? What is it the department has to accomplish in order to be out from under the consent decree? But having a federal judge as the impartial person who holds everyone accountable, I think was critical because, as you know, since we the consent decree was put in place, there's been many, many mayors and many different city councils and different police chiefs. And if you want the continuity in a department, it's good to have somebody that can hold people accountable. I do believe it's time to find a way to finish the consent decree here and still keep public trust because we now have something we didn't have before. We have a very different OPA. We have an Office of Inspector General, which was new, and the CPC grew out of the consent decree and has changed. So we have three oversight bodies that I think have to be empowered to do the job um, and that the federal court needs to find a way to make sure that it's satisfied we've reached the terms of the consent decree, but let Seattle move on. So overall, you believe that it has had positive outcomes, but you wanna see an end to it. Absolutely, but an end I want to make really clear, an end that has clear objectives and has confidence that the public knows and community knows that there, that there are still ways to measure progress and hold people accountable. And we still have to make sure that we can demonstrate that the purpose of the consent decree has been satisfied. We aren't quite there yet. I've met with a monitor just this week in developing what are those things we will do under the monitoring plan to make sure that the city of Seattle continues to improve and focus on those things that we didn't get right. 